Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Historic Set Dark Saviors Alright, this set was released on May 24th, 2018 and introduces Sky Striker and Fahaya to TCG. And I want to say something of note. Why is this um, set historic? Because I would say this. Sky Striker is, I would call it, the best OCG deck of all time. Coming out in OCG first, since 2018 until up until 2023, near around that time, this deck has been in the meta scene. And it's only I feel near the near like you know I think 2022, 2022. But even still, this is the deck that's had the longest time in the competitive scene in Yu-Gi-Oh, and has had a big fan reaction, especially when support has been announced for it. So a lot can be said. Even Sky Strike Mobilizing Gauge is a card to this day that a lot of us players have said, has felt that Pot of Greed could come back because Engage, we kind of feel power creeps it. When you have a card in an archetype quest and it allows you to question one of the early banned cards of the game, you know this deck and cards in it are completely busted. Anyways, that's all there is to it. And for higher did have some relevance in our game, but that was several years later, as you know, with Runic. But on release, Fahaya was basically dead to the competitive scene in both OCG and TCG. And I don't think it was even hitting Rogue. Well, let's carry on. And so we have a value engine Sky Striker. Indeed, at this time, Sky Striker was in everything. The value of the engine was really quite expensive and during 2018 tokens were a thing especially we got to remember last year the last year was 2017 where link format had just released and essentially token production was a thing i think we did limit um um scare scapegoat at the time yep but even still, the Sky Striker package was really good. And as an engine, Horn Sky Striker Hornet Drones was just a great, a free token producing card that you could search with, cut with engage. Yeah, very engaging and all manners of things. Fantastic. So definitely the engine that was expensive at the time. We have our wild card Foolish Goods. Indeed, Foolish Goods premiered in this set and um taking we have to take consideration at this time i think pancrotops was just released and foolish goods was a pretty solid staple because we had one of as we had at the time the best going second monster in the game which was pancrotops now i believe it is uh now as we know in 2024 the best going second monster is cashier fenrir and we've had recently, as you know, uh, Pancrotops has come to two. But anyways, you know, soon, rather than soon, a Pancrotops went to one, you know, in the 2018, later down the year. But anyways, Foolish Goods was good, as you could send the Dino Wrestler field spell. The field spell had you the ability, which was able to you to search Pancrotops. Anyways, Foolish Goods was just a great wild card overall. And then we had a good reprint, which was Scapegoat. I think Scapegoat was a good reprint, because you got to remember at the time, Scapegoat was really still very strong. Whether it was limited or not, regardless, it was a very hard card to get, as it was a sought-after card. So at this point in time, Scapegoat was a relatively good reprint. It wasn't the best reprint of 2018, I can definitely tell you that, but it was a good reprint nonetheless legacy support vampire indeed vampire did get some support uh this was the first wave of support 
was it the first wave i believe it was the second wave of support that vampire got i believe they had some support a few years earlier but anyways yeah i think it was four years later i think their first wave of support 2014 but regardless of when they got the support this this was the only legacy support in this set which was vampire there's not really much to say about legacy support in this set that's pretty much it let's move on okay so let's talk about it and let's grade this set for the time this set was a grade level of c now this is what cool as a cucumber now its initial and possibly during the year it then got an increase maybe late 2018 maybe possibly went to a a or you know an a you know an a a star you know for distinction becoming one of the best sets of the year but why was it initially just a c plus well apart from sky striker but sky strikers was something that was you know imagined you know early on but sky strikers had a lot of naysayers about it and he had a lot of things about it that people both ocg and tsg we just were not convinced um this was the first time we had an archetype that basically had just one monster and the rest of it were spells um you know we had so many we had loads of link monsters loads of spells the whole concept of just link summoning with tokens well it was a relatively new thing um it was just not we were just not convinced really it, there was just not a lot of faith in sky strikers it was misplaced faith little did we realize that was, that at the time that konami had released one of the strong one of the strongest decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! but at the time obviously we didn't really see it that way and yeah so hindsight is a thing and so for all these things yeah just a grade of c just slightly you know above average you know yeah that's all i've got to say really tune in next time for more historic sets and maybe we'll talk more about some interesting sets in the future that have shaped Yu-Gi-Oh's history until then we come to the end of this video so as i like to say you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master my fate right is in your hands